Hello, hello, and welcome to the channel. Today we're down in Paul Key Boat Haven to look at this 1999 Azimut 42. Classic Azimut design, you can see with the uh, teardrop windows, the raked radar arch. So we start at the back of the boat. You can see it's got a extended bathing platform, which is laid to GRP. Current owner has got a Sea-Doo Spark on here. You can change that if you want to. You can put a, uh, any sort of tender you wanted, a rib or a fully inflatable, or paddle boards if you chose. The nice thing about this one is it has got the Besanzoni hydraulic passerelle. And the neat thing about this is as it extends out, these arms then lift up and give you a handrail so you can walk off the boat. But the other great thing about it is you can use it as a crane to lift your tender or CD spark off. Radar arch at the top there, which we'll have a look when we're on the flybridge. But let's go and have a look forward. Entries through these really nice wide gates. There's one on either side. So there's another one on that side and you can see they slide sharp so you can keep the children or the dogs in. Very much a med style boat if you like because it's got the passerelle, stern to mooring. You also have these really quite substantial stainless steel cleats with the stainless fair lead which are really good. Shut that gate. Locker down here. There's another locker over the far side, another cleat and a fair lead. Big locker in here with the life rafting. And if I move this table forward a little bit, you can see there's a run of seating around the back there with storage underneath. Our cockpits are all laid to teak. The run of stairs takes you up to the flybridge. Quite a decent overhang as well actually here. So even if you haven't got your canvas covers on, you've still got a decent level of protection. That's all got LED lighting in there as well. Large sliding cockpit doors here. Slide out and give you good access. Let's go and have a look inside. So the first thing you notice is how incredibly open plan it is. There's a big run of seating on the on the starboard side here, a nice table. There's a little there's a twin seat on the port side, and then it all drops down into the galley and the forward cabins helm station up on the right hand side. So if we just turn around on ourselves for a moment, you can see the door you've come in. Little sort of TV cabinet unit here, which is quite sweet. Conventional drawers as you'd expect them. But this one certainly took my eye, look at this. This is the original Azimut cutlery. Don't know how well you can see that, but it's got the Azimut logo on it, which is rather pleasant, all in its little locators. Another drawer down the bottom here, crockery and the like. TV on the top there. Current owners put a little weather station in here. What you have, um, throughout the boat is reverse cycle air conditioning. So what that means is you can have, if you're in the middle of the summer, you can have nice cool air, but on a day like today, potentially you can actually reverse that air conditioning around and produce warm air being blown through these vents you can see here around the boat. On the other side, you've got the uh, leather, cream leather sofa. If you know me, you'll know I like a table. So here we've got a very large table that I think you can fold out so you can eat both sides or you can swing it around the other way so you can have it as a, as a full seated table this side. Little cabinet down here, again this one's got audio equipment in it, lovely drinks cabinet in there, beautifully made, the woodwork is high gloss and really really nice. That takes you to a step up to the helm station. Before we go up to the helm station, we just have a look in here. It's your distribution panel. So you've got AC and DC power, and then trips for everything on the 12 volt side. 
and then breakers for the mains AC side. Engine new switches, the usual row of carling switches. And here we've got the we have a Simrad, this is an older style plotter. And then here you've got the uh, Race on radar repeater, auto helm, nice wooden steering wheel, really nice actually, suede, blue suede, not shoes though, ship shore radio, on this side, on the starboard side, got a bow thruster, engine controls, trim tab tabs, controls, and fairly conventional set of engine display so you've got two tanks rpm one rpm two engine oil pressure oil pressure that side and then engine temperature and by data information for the auto helm conventional swan compass this is quite clever this little window mechanism here open so you can get some fresh air through on a hot day really good view forward massive massive pantograph wipers but generally speaking it's just there's a lot of glass it's a really light and bright boat. It is not a bright day today, so it gives you a really good indication of how well lit naturally this boat is. So from the helm station, you take a couple of steps down, drop into the galley, via this really chunky stainless handrail. Then in the galley, you've got a light wood, looks like with, yeah, with white inserts. Really open, really light galley. The thing that caught my eye with this galley is the fact that it comes with a full-size fridge. The storage space in the doors. Don't often get a full-size fridge on a 42-foot boat in the 90s. Late, late 90s, to be fair. Corian work surface, again, really useful. Double sinks, so one for washing, one for drying. Got a swivel mixer tap. Opening port light for ventilation. Ceramic hob, combi microwave I suspect down there. This boat does come with a generator, which is why it's got electric cooking and not gas. Nice deep storage cover up there. And you've got additional storage down here as well. For your watsits. Toasters and other bits and pieces in the cupboard down there. And I suspect under the sink, yeah, there you go, all your cleaning products and the ubiquitous bin. The nice thing about the galley is because it's so light and bright. Oh, we have one more cupboard here, let's have a look. There you go, another storage cupboard. Yeah, the nice thing about the galley is you can be part of what's going on. So if you're creating a meal or doing some food or even washing up down here, you're still part of all the people in the saloon and you've still got eye line and communication lines with the captain or whoever steering. I just noticed as well actually the steering wheel is adjustable as well. So from the galley you move forward into sort of the anti-chamber for the cabins. We shall go forward, we'll start and go forward. So we'll go forward into the master. You've got a very large centre line double, mirror at the back. Nice illumination in the fact that you've got an opening escape hatch port light there. Got a couple of port lights, one that side, on the other side. Storage in the form of very large hanging locker in there. You've then got a repeat of the reverse cycle air conditioning controls, light switches. Storage underneath the bed, as you would expect, drawer. Little built-in TV there, which is quite neat. More storage space. And drawers below. That's just a little heater just to keep a bit of damp out. As I say, it is a pretty cold day. Blinds on both sides, speakers. There's a power point at the head of the bed as well. But this is this is a decent sized bed with decent floor space around it. Because it's the master cabin, it comes with an ensuite head, decent size again, vacuum flush loo, one thing I always like, heat vent, so you keep the bathroom warm, really, really large 
wrap around the shower. So water drains out the floor and this shower screen all round like so. So really useful in the fact that you can have a shower. Oops, I need to put the shower head back in. You can have a shower without getting water all over the floor. Wash basin, then you've got storage, probably up here behind this mirror. There you go. Towel storage, and behind here is an opening port light so you can get fresh air and ventilation through. Towel storage behind the door. But the woodwork's lovely here. So that's the master cabin. If we go back into the chamber, you'll see there's another two doors here. First one is into the day heads, but that's also then got a Jack and Jill here into the twin second cabin. Another vacuum flush loo, which is really nice. You want to flush the loo, all you have to do, push your foot on that lever and it vacuums the loo out. Opening port light, sink, shower, exactly the same format as before. Mirror, towel storage. And then what we can do, I think the other door's shut, to use the jack and jill to go through the bathroom into the second cabin so here you have the twin cabin quite logically two berths sometimes i don't know if on this boat you can actually fill them out and make it a double opening port light over there there is definitely loads of standing headroom where i am you can see it drops down one level here which is probably just about four foot four foot six i should think it drops down again and Probably sitting headroom in both beds, I would imagine. You've got light switches down there. There is a wardrobe in here. Decent wardrobe. And as in the other cabin, you've then got a selection of drawers underneath. Another one down there. Let's just shut this door for a moment. And we will go out back into the main cabin so as you can see very light very bright lovely woodwork really spacious now bearing in mind this is a 42 foot boat here you go over there is the thermostatic controller and timer for the diesel power central heating let's go and have a look on the flybridge as i mentioned before the other nice thing about this boat is it has molded steps so many boats you'll look at will actually have like a literally like a ladder you have to climb up so we'll climb up here access hatch which you can close down keep the weather out if you're in the cockpit trying to keep warm take a step forward into the helm position first passenger captain helm seat with standard horizon chart plotter which I suspect probably also repeats the radar. Bow thruster here. You just have a seat down in here. Yeah so then you've got your bow thruster, 12 volt socket, clip in for the old school shipmate radio, more conventional VHF, same engine controls repeated from downstairs, auto helm, engine start stop control panel, throttles, and looks like there's a handheld spotlight there as well. Really good view forward. If you stand up, an incredible view forward. View over here of Brown Sea Island as well. Upstairs is nice, it's, it's a really sociable flybridge. You've got an array of seating here, an array of seating here. People on board. And then back at the section, the back behind by the radar arch, you've got sunbathing. You can lay down, relax. Behind us here, let's have a closer look. Horns, TV aerial, two VHF aerials, GPS, radar, and an array of nav lights. It is a very, very spacious, if I take a step back here, if you can see, very, very spacious flybridge. Lots of social space. Let's go and have a quick look around the decks bit of extra storage in here as well it's just the nice thing about these molded steps is it makes them so easy to go up and down 
quick unzip here. Again, quite unusual for a boat of this size is very wide side decks, very clever little scuppers here. So if you hit a wave and it runs down the side deck, it drops into the scupper, drains over the side, rather than running into the cockpit. Nice, good, solid, chunky as well handrail. Decent sized cleats, midship cleats. There's that opening sliding window we looked at inside. Do apologize, this one's had a little bit of a seagull action on it. But it does give you an idea of the size of the foredeck. Escape hatch into the fore cabin or out of the fore cabin. Cleats again, electric switches for the anchor, one and two. Electric anchor inch anchor in there and then under here is a very large anchor locker this that's neat the anchor has got a molded bin to sit in so the anchor chain sits in the molded bin in there and then you put your fenders and other bits and pieces out the way without it getting lumped on by the anchor chain so there you go one azimuth 42. Now for those who are interested, and I know not everybody is, we'll have a quick look in the engine bay. So I'll catch you up in a moment in the engine bay. So welcome back, back at the engine bay. Just lifted up this very large hatch, which goes vertically on these two gas rams, which is really, really nice. Quite light, quite easy to lift up. Then there is a little ladder down here. That takes you into the engine bay. Stainless steel tank on one side is your cola generator. Believe it to be a 5k, not too sure, but I think it's a 5k cola generator. And then on the other side, another stainless steel tank. It's so nice to be able to be gain access to the tanks. Quite often they are so hidden away, normally either side of the engine. You've also got access down here to your shaft glands so effectively these shafts come straight out the back of the engines disappear through the hole there and connect to the props we've got two caterpillar engines here i'll put the engine specs below in the video below nice tidy engine bay water separators over there fire suppression system down here and you can, it looks like, gain access through the cockpit sole. So up there it is the cockpit of the saloon, and then you can gain access through to the engine bay. Fuel separator, number one. Fuel separator number two. And then there, down here is your other gland going out to the props. So there we go, that is the engine bay. Hope you've enjoyed the video any comments or questions please put them below and i will see you next time thank you very much one azimuth 42